Hello, everyone. I have the pleasure of introducing Helene Marie Anderson. She is the author of You Are Meant to Sing and creator of the transformational program that inspired the book. Uh, she's a classically trained singer and pianist. After a career in the classical music world, Helene's journey led her to create sacral sounds encompassing her certifications and trainings in sound healing, craniosacral therapy, massage therapy, energy healing, and yoga. Her passion is to help people sing, open their voices, and transform. Please welcome Helene. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm really excited to have all of you here today. And I really want to start today by saying sort of the story with the chapel. And uh, I posted on social media about this the other day. But my friend Ellie, who's sitting right there, uh, the first time I came to this chapel was for her wedding, which was more than a decade ago. And I took some pictures at the chapel. At the time, I lived in New York. She lived in New York. They've since lived in many different countries and come back. So I just want to express my gratitude to Ellie and uh, for making this happen today and for having me here. And so, yes, it's really nice to have you. Um, so as he said, like my, my role in this life, the way I see it, is really to help people with their voices. And what that means is not just singing, but also speaking how you think about your words, how you use your words every day, whether you choose to speak or not speak, how you manage the silence, how you tell your story, how you don't tell your story. And it, within the words, it, it really helps to transform by being that specific, by the words we use, by how we use them. Uh, often we find ourselves telling the same story over and over again. It might be of something that happened to us, a trauma, something where we might consider ourselves a victim. And what actually happens when we keep telling the same story over and over again is we actually keep recreating that story. So there is a difference in telling a story when you learn how to transform it and you start to tell the story from a place of transformation a place where you actually have made a change, where you've used that story to be of service to help other people, where a lot of my story that I included in my book, which I just finished in the fall, I have it here, this is uh, the book, it's You Are Meant to Sing, 10 Steps to Unlock Your Inner Voice. And the whole purpose of it is uh, illustration of my journey, but also giving really practical exercises, tools, and things I did to really change my life around. Like, I worked in the classical music industry. I, had a, I have a master's degree in arts administration from Indiana University. I used to work at the LA Philharmonic. I used to work at the music publisher Boozy and Hawks. And I had this whole other life that was connected around me supporting everybody else's art and what everybody else did. And I was really silent in my own creativity and my own art. I rarely sang, I rarely played the piano except for myself, and it all of a sudden realized at some point after my father passed that I wasn't really functioning in the level or at the level that I felt like I was meant to. And I was really uh, letting my gifts sort of be in the back corner instead of bringing them to the forefront. And so it was a longer journey. It took me about nine years to fully get to this space now. But the point is, and the, my whole premise in this is that all of you have the ability to do this. Like all of, it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter what your background is. It's really about what it is that really lights you up. Like what it is about your voice, your story, and how that happens for you. And so, all of this relates to the what uh, the throat chakra. And if any of you are not familiar with the chakra system. It's an ancient system of just viewing the body in seven different energy channels, and it was developed in India about 500 to 1500 BC. They don't really know exactly when. And uh, what it is is there are seven energy centers where from your pelvis below is the root chakra, so it's all your grounding and stability. The second chakra right below your belly button is all creativity, birthing, creation, and then you have your solar plexus chakra, which is right here in your rib cage. And that's where your diaphragm is, which is your primary singing muscle. And that's your personal power center, uh, how you show yourself in the world. 
And then your chest is your heart chakra, so it's all love, like every kind of love uh, and every kind of relationship, how you put yourself in the world, the love of your work, of everything that shows up. And then your throat chakra is kind of the bridge between what they say the higher chakras and the lower chakras. And in this area, it's all your primary center of communication, like how you speak, how you talk to people, how you present yourself through words is so important. And, and then moving upwards, you have the third eye chakra, which is really um, in between your eyes and the forehead. And that's all your intuition. It's sort of how you perceive people when you come in contact to them, with them, how you perceive your work. And then the crown chakra is just your, your connection to your higher self, the divine, whatever that means for you. And so when you sing, you actually use all of these chakra centers. They're all open at that time when you're singing, because if you're singing properly and you're really connected, it's actually the easiest way to align yourself. And it doesn't really matter if you consider yourself a singer or not, because I usually say that every single one of you has sung in the shower, in the car, like even if you're like, I have a terrible voice, no one should hear me. It doesn't matter because you have this resonant chamber in your voice that can help you to heal, actually because sound is physical matter, it's vibration. And if you think of when you learn in science class that you have an atom, right? Like, and you have like the nucleus and the proton and the electron and, and how they teach you that 95 to 99% of the atom is space and everything is made up of atoms. So if you really think of it, everything around us is space. There's so much that's there that actually physically something is existing in that, we just can't necessarily perceive it. And so when you think of sound, sound exists in that space. So sometimes when you hear the vibration of these specific instruments that are developed for sound healing purposes, the vibration and the overtones that happen as a result of when I sing with the bowls, when I play with the gong, when you play them together, it actually creates these binaural beats, which are the brainwave states. So it mimics the alpha, delta, theta, wave, theta waves of the brain, which are the ultimate, uh, ultimate levels of healing. When you talk about meditation, dream states, where we are kind of in and out of consciousness, that's the place where our bodies undergo the deepest healing that's possible. And so that is why sound is so effective, because sometimes for people that live a lot in their head and you're always thinking and you can't ever shut down, sound helps you get there a little bit faster. And that's why some people really like it. And sound can also bring up stuff that wants to release because it functions in the energy field. So sound is energy. It is physical matter. It sometimes feels like it's touching you, and especially when it's intentional. So it's the same reason why if you listen to music or certain things that make you feel a certain way and why you keep wanting to listen to it, that's something that helps move the energy. And if you sing and you move at the same time, then it also helps you even further. So is, is there anybody here, this is your first sound bath experience ever? Awesome. Yay, welcome. And uh, so the best thing to do is just to be super open. There is actually space in the pews for anyone that wants to lay down. You can lay down and just open up that possibility for you. We have someone in the front that's like, yeah, I'm taking you up on that. Uh, so we, I will go for probably 25 minutes when we start to do the sound bath, but to prepare, there's always something I like to do is that actually I'd, I, I'd like to ask all of you to stand up for a minute. And I'd like us all together to just three times just to say and sing actually OM. And OM is known to be the sound of creation. Any of you in here who've taken yoga classes, I'm sure you've done OM before. The purpose of that is that it grounds the energy of the space. So I always say that what comes through in the sound is actually music in real time, because it's music that I'm improvising based on this exact time and space. So it's pure presence in the moment for all of you who are here, for anyone that's listening on live stream, and it's really just bringing in the energy of everybody who's showing up. So if we can just take a deep breath in together. Um. Deep breath. 
breath in. Aum. Deep breath in. Aum. You can open your eyes. That was beautiful, everybody. And just take a minute just to shake out that energy. We have a full moon lunar eclipse coming up on Wednesday, which uh, for any of you that pay attention to such things, uh, it is actually a time of release right now and a time of balancing feminine energy. So if you want to just think in your life of something that you, as we do the sound, like something you're ready to release, it could be a pattern, it could be, some, uh, it could be a person, it could be something that's happening. It doesn't really matter what it is, but just think about what that is. And then second, think of what you want to replace with that. Because a lot of times we think we just want to let something go and then it goes and we don't think about what we're replacing it with and so it leaves the energy open for that same thing to come back in. So it's really good to just think about what, and it could be just as simple as more love or more light or whatever that means for you. So, uh, so with that in mind, you can go ahead and sit down and we'll get, or lay down and make yourself comfortable. And we'll go ahead and begin.
so everyone can just take a deep breath and let's sigh it out. Another deep breath in, sigh it out. Another deep breath in and sigh it out. And you can open your eyes when you're ready. So thank you all so much for that. It was really fun. It's such a beautiful space in here, right? Like the reverberation and everything. And uh, even the laughter of the children outside and stuff. It all becomes part of the whole experience of whatever happens. Uh, it's something I keep talking about in my events right now. But uh, I feel like since the beginning of this year... I've been really focused on what I call fierce presence or radical presence of really being in rather the story of the past or the story of the future of actually being really, really here now, like in this moment, whatever that moment is. Because I think a lot of us, a lot of times, myself included, have had a tendency to spend so much time worrying about the past or letting the past define the present instead of really paying attention to what's showing up. And then, you know, always thinking, well, I wish I was here, or I wish I was there, or I really don't want to be here. Or, and every time we think those things, we're taking ourselves out of what can present itself as a gift right now. And so I've been really working at catching myself and my thoughts and actions every minute of every day when I start thinking, God, I really wish I was here. I really wish I was with this person. I really wish that I couldn't do this. Or, and I realize it's all of that thinking is really a waste of time if you can just be present where you are. And it doesn't mean don't learn from the past. Absolutely learn from the past. Absolutely set goals for the future, like have a vision, but then keep continually bringing yourself back to the moment because so much gets lost when we bring ourselves away from that moment. And, uh, and I can just explain a little bit, especially for those of you that haven't really experienced sound before, everything I do singing-wise is completely improvised. None of that is something I planned out. I really just sort of feel into the energy of the space, of the people, of the time. And then I let whatever comes through, comes through. And sometimes, as you heard, it can be super intense. And sometimes it's super serene and quiet. And it's always a little bit different. So this just gave you a taste of what a sound bath is. Usually it's a little bit longer. And you're laying down on yoga mats. And it's a contained space. So it's, but every time it's different. And every time it's perfect for whatever it's supposed to be. So... That was all of your energy coming through, so I thank you for that. And uh, as I was talking about in the beginning, I know some of you came in later, but the whole idea of the throat and like singing what my book is about, really using your every bit of energy with your voice in every capacity to really create your life. And what I really encourage is... For all of you who say you don't sing or you don't sing in front of other people or you are too shy to sing in front of other people, then sing in your car still. You know, sing in the shower still. Sing for your family member who will still listen to you. Uh, because what happens is, is that in that space, that vibration, we have an instrument, a physical instrument in our body to use. Like, that's what it's there. And the voice can really move energy. I mean, one of the exercises, which sounds a little intense, but I often teach screaming, like, or the primal scream, because if you're, like, really frustrated one day, just take a towel and be like, ah, oh, or, like, go in when you're in the car. And I find, like, you know, within a couple times of doing that, then I'm laughing, right? It just it shifts the energy really fast. So when you sing, you notice certain music will Im immediately change your mood or help you amplify a mood or a person or a thing. So... I really encourage you to do that. And there was something I, I mean, I wanted to just read something in terms of uh, something that you can give. I wanted to give you uh, one little tidbit from the book and just to read what I was saying about the story of getting in touch with your voice. So this is getting to the core through storytelling. In revisiting the storytelling pieces of, of pieces of previous chapters, it becomes clear that looking at stories that define your core being are essential to the process of honing your full creative voice. And this is for whatever it is for any of you. 
Think back to a few pinnacle times throughout your life where you can identify feeling vital, happy, free, and excited to share your voice. It could be singing a solo in a concert, a play you put on for your family, a story you wrote, or a time when you stepped up to the plate and made a major difference in one person's life. This will help you with seeing the trajectory of your life and moments that sharing your voice was relevant to who you are. One of my own stories foreshadows many elements that exist in my life at present. Greensboro, North Carolina, though a nice southern city to grow up in, had very segregated neighborhoods and pockets. My family lived in a nice new development area made up of mostly white upper middle class families with a few notable exceptions. The weekend before my 16th birthday, my parents allowed me to invite my out of town friends to stay for the weekend. The first night we all went on a walk through my neighborhood and saw a house at the end of our street with Christmas lights. This was early November. I had the bright idea to ring the doorbell and sing Christmas carols. So we went up to the door, rang the doorbell, and began singing Joy to the World. It turns out the family living there was Indian, and the many people in the house were decked out in saris and turbans. <laughs> they were celebrating Guru Nanak's birthday, an Indian holiday. That's why they had the lights. The neighbors loved us singing so much that they invited us inside. We sang for the entire party of people, they took pictures and then offered us food from their large Indian feast. It was the first time I had ever had Indian food, and now I eat it all the time. This experience foreshadowed elements of my path, which currently involves integrating different cultures and beliefs into a place of acceptance and understanding. My path involves teaching and working with elements of healing modalities that come from multiple cultures and places, including the chakras, which are originated from India, my personal life and outward life are inclusive of participants and clients from all over the world. And it came, all came from being open enough to share my voice and to listen to what it wanted to express. All voices are meant to be heard. All voices are valid. All voices carry truth. So I really just, I, I welcome all of you today, like if you can take something away from this, like really take a minute today to sit down and think about these points in your life from like maybe three different areas where you actually really had that experience where you felt like you were really in your truth and you just felt free. Because those are the indicators of what it is you should really be doing and how you've been, you should be expressing yourself in the outside world. And that's where it comes into play. And as I was talking in the beginning about the throat chakra and opening up and getting really clear on why your voice is so powerful, there is a famous quote about, you know, uh, when, you, when you're ready to speak, ask if it's kind and necessary, too. And is it truth first, then is it kind, and then third, is it necessary? So if you're really thinking through, it doesn't mean that I'm saying always speak your truth. If it's something that's really not necessary to speak in that moment, sometimes silence is the best teacher. But at the same time, don't deny your own speaking or singing or whatever because you're trying to make somebody else happy. Like, make sure that you're still in your own integrity with your voice and how you're expressing yourself. And that's the, the energy that I encourage everybody to really embrace in who they are, whatever that means. And uh, I'd like to leave you with what I feel is kind of the core lesson of the power of sound in your voice, that authentic communication through our singing and speaking voice is essential to the way we perceive and tell our story and express our feelings. Cultivation of this chakra will bring more harmony and balance into all of your relationships and give you the tools to bring more positive affirmations and manifestations into your lives on a daily basis. The stillness, which some of you might have experienced a moment of that during the sound, helps you get more in touch with what that inner voice is and listening prayer, meditation, anything that resonates with you that way helps you get in touch with what that is. And then you can create that inner space and create the words you need to shift in the present moment anything that you want to be different in the future. Sometimes the choice is the silence, which is also utilizing the throat chakra in a healthy way. 
And one can also use the voice to access places in the body that are stuck and move through them, opening up the channels for health and healing, which is why I encouraged you doing the OM, like doing the screaming, whatever it is that you need to release, laughing, all of that, using the voice, breathing with a sigh, all of that is useful. The importance of developing this practice and what you can do in your life with this, with the vibration of this healing and using your voice this way, by singing songs, by saying affirmations, whatever it is that that means to you, either from other traditions or ones of your own making, it doesn't matter. It just means that these are all ways that you can cultivate using your voice to change anything in your life that's not working. So you have that power. And uh, I'd actually, because it was so beautiful in the beginning, I'd like to close with us doing three ohms again together. So I might ask if you guys can all stand again, because that was nice to have you all standing. So just go ahead and close your eyes, taking a deep breath in. Um. Another deep breath in. Deep breath in. Um. When you're ready, you can open your eyes. And thank you all so much for being here today, for being a part of this whole experience. I will be around for a few minutes afterwards if anyone has any questions, but thank you so much for being here, and Ellie for arranging it, and the Wayfarers Chapel for having me, so thank you very much.